tell us we have a word. Can you please silence your pager, cell phones, and please rise for communication from Council of Thank you, Council President Pro Tem. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer and then the Pledge. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So there's two applications tonight, both relating to Christmas in the city. Um, first one is from the bid on Saturday, December 3rd. This would be the downtown outside portion, 2 to 6 p.m. on Main and Center Streets, parade at 6 p.m. You'll also have caroling, food, and drinks. And the second half is um, put in by Batavia players with the bid on also December 3rd, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the city center <coughs> golf course with vendors, entertainment, refreshments, and Santa. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments or concerns? Oh. Will the city be reimbursed towards uh, for overtime on uh, concourse hours? No, they, um, this is a budgeted item. Okay. The city budgets for Christmas in the city expenditures. Okay. Any other concerns, questions? Okay. Uh, Council President report announcement of the next city council <coughs> business meeting to be held on Tuesday, November 14th, 2022, at 7 p.m. at the City Hall Council Board Room, second floor, City Center. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, day. it's Monday the 14th. It says Tuesday, but I think the 14th is Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dubai-Kowski. It'll be Monday. Monday, sir. Okay. Okay, up next, uh, we have a presentation by Mr. Nichols on the Dwyer Stadium. Am I in the way? Yes. <laughs> We're going to drop that screen. How long do I got to hold it? No, you're Do the whole thing. Here you go. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which one's like the one that's short? Thank You are set to go, sir. 
Hello, I'm Robbie Nichols, uh, owner of Can USA Sports, and we control the, the Muck Dogs. My name is Mark Witt, I'm the general manager for Can USA Sports and the Batavia Muck Dogs. We just wanted to come today and give you a recap on our last season and things we're doing in Batavia and seeing if we can change anything to be better on the usage of Dwyer Stadium. So here we have a list of our 2022 events uh, from this last season. We sort of wrapped up um, this October. We had over 40 high school games throughout May, April, and June. Challenger Division Baseball. Obviously, we had our Mock Dogs home games, which had over 50,000 people in attendance for those throughout the season. 30 uh, youth baseball games. We did our Battle of the Badges game in July. Police first fire here. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We did uh, some dance clinics through KMS Dance Academy. Yeah, I was going to say, our winners are here. Yeah, who won? Does anybody want to say who won? Yes. I think the fire department. Yeah. <laughs> they have to come for two years in a row. <laughs> the police said this is their year. Uh, we're looking forward to next year. Uh, we did some uh, college games there as well. Uh, SUNY Geneseo and uh, Use the Field September and October. We did host two concerts that was new this year, Margaritaville and ZBTV, the Zach Brown Tribute Band. So that was a lot of fun. Our Alzheimer's Walk was in October, and then we just, just finished with our Muck Dogs Trick or Treat, which uh, is our second year of doing it. And our first year we had 500 trick or treaters and about 2,000 families. This year we had 2,100 trick or treaters <laughs> and 5,000 families. It was a zoo. So that was our last event of the season. And then this, just I think if you click one more, it'll play. Okay. Try it. You're not that fancy. I don't know. This is, a, if you go down to the, there oh, we go. Oh, here it is. Well, here's a quick video just shows you the line went all the way down. To the next street and down to the high school. Wow. <laughs> just in line, had, oh, wait, to open the doors. It was a, it was a madhouse. It was a lot of fun. So this is some, community, some of our community support and attendance numbers for the 2022 season. The annual visitors this year at Dwyer for all those events, about 84,000 people went to the park this year, so we increased that by 13% from last season as our first, first year with the team. There's 169 baseball teams of this caliber in America. We rank 22nd in the United States in attendance, about 1,800 a night is at 2,600 capacity. We hosted over 120 events. It's averaged about 20 events a month from April to October. Dwyer Stadium has something going on, so we're shooting for every single day. We're almost there. Uh, we hosted 22 picnics throughout the year, and we went and spoke at schools. We did some youth baseball clinics with our team. We walked in the parades. We donated a bunch of local charities and area events as well. So this is just- These are just, yeah, more community slides if you see uh, the players in the community walking in the parade. That's where we're stalking at. What school was that? That one was Elba. Elba. Two. It was a Spanish-speaking school in Elba, and the coach and all our Spanish players went there. This is our everybody in the parade, getting ready for the parade. This is uh, our favorite event, um, Challenger Division Baseball. We take a day out, we play with the Challenger Divisions, and we have a real, they're the stars of the show, and the kids are, and we have a real game, and they all, all hit home runs, and they, have their games, uh, names announced, and this is our best event of the season. Our recap, the shirt you got, where you were the West Division champions, so we were one game away, we went to the very final game, and we lost in the championship game, so I was really uh, proud of the players. You may want to remember the name Nolan Sparks. He was the pitcher of the year in the whole league. Um, he gave up zero runs during his entire season and uh, won his playoff game and was great. We had four players named to the all-star team and uh, we were one of the business of the year for the Chamber of Commerce in 2021. So we're very happy with our year here at the day. This is just some more, some stats for our Muck Dogs Mafia, our, our fans. We have 504 season ticket holders, so 20% of our stadium is already filled nightly with just season ticket holders. We had over 25 local school groups, dance groups, karate groups that performed at Dwyer during our games. 10 local color guards, whether that was scouts, military, police, fire. Uh, we have our Turnbull Heating and Air baseball buddies, so youth baseball teams get to run out there with their favorite Muck Dogs players. We had 25 of them this season. 
17 50-50 fundraisers with youth sports or nonprofits, so helping raise some money locally with our partners in the community. Uh, Batavia Original sponsors the teacher of the game. We recognize 30 teachers at the game. They get four free tickets and a meal. HP Hood does our bat boy, bat girls. They get to go out there on the bench the whole game. We had 39 of them. They get to sit right there with the players. And 35 first pitches, whether that was some students, community leaders, businesses. Uh, we even had for our Elba night, the Onion Queen threw an onion out as the first pitch. <laughs> to get creative with them. Um, and then, of course, our most popular item, which is the photo, our Graham Corporation kids run. We did 30 of those. The kids just run the bases right in the middle of the game. These are a few of the things that we've done this past season uh, over at Dwyer, uh, from painting locker rooms, uh, baseball mix to the field, spray to fertilize the grass, power wash the outside of the stadium, power wash the seats, painted both dugouts, added a new bullpen to the visiting team area, landscaped Dwyer Stadium, new cooking appliances, added 40 tables and 150 chairs, painted the main office, painted the sack bar, and most important, new updated toilet paper rolls and toilet paper holders and that's important. That's that is the most important. One of the most important. <laughs> This just shows an overall impact here. The previous ownership group was averaging about 100 season ticket holders, 900 people a night. They did about 20 non-traditional muck dogs games, maybe 15 picnics a year from the data we had. And then we took over in 2021. Uh, we've had over 500 season ticket holders every year, 1,800 a night. We're averaging 80 non-traditional muck dogs rentals each season and 20 to 25 picnics each season. What's next for Dwyer Stadium? Um, these are a few things that we have talked about we would like to do. We have been in a little bit of talks about it. Um, one is we, we've had a lot of season ticket holders looking for a party deck that was there for many years uh, before we took over, and they would like to see that come back. My most important one is number two. I think safety netting is the most important for our fans, and I, we never like to see somebody get hit with a foul ball. They're coming out with their family to watch a game. Um, Plus, I'm at the snack bar every night working, and balls come into the snack bar, so we're hoping we can get some more netting near the snack bar. Um, number three, at this time, we would like to talk to the city and talk about extending our lease um, when we can. Um, it's kind of hard to believe, but we only have three years left. Two years have gone by already, and we want to make some more major changes and put some investment and capital money into the ballpark, but we want to make sure that you're happy with us and would want us here for another 25 years or whatever you'd like to <laughs> see us here for. Um, and there's a seat, seating project that needs to be finished. It started and looks great, but it stopped, I think, because of COVID and we missed, we didn't finish two sections. And so some other projects we'd like to work on. That's what we would like to see next. And especially thank you, thank you for trusting Can USA Sports to come in here and run your stadium and uh, we're, we're happy with it. If there's anything we can do to improve, we're open, always open to suggestions or different things you'd like to see your stadium used for. We tell everybody we're the holder of the keys. We want the high school games all being played there. We want the kids games being played there. We, like Mark said, we would, we're happy if it's used every single night. That's what our goal. It's your stadium, we want it to be used. And we also have a, Big announcement, we're working with the arena um, with Maddie Gray, and I think Maddie's done a great job for what we've seen. We've been over there a bunch, and we're working with him trying to bring more business and people to the arena. And we, we're gonna announce today on March 31st, Friday, March 31st, is something Batavia has never seen before. We are bringing the World Championship XIIIR, which is Extreme International Ice Racing. So we're bringing motorcycles on ice, these motorcycles go 60 miles per hour and they'll be in the arena. And they go all around the country to big arenas and we're gonna bring it here to Batavia on March 31st. So it's gonna be something, I'm getting kind of goosey because it's in big, we, we go around and put it in 12,000 seat arenas and stuff. And I'm a part of one of that. So we're gonna bring that to Batavia on March 31st. So it's gonna be something very unique. <laughs> and it's gonna be very limited tickets too. <laughs> Usually we get 12,000 people at the buildings and stuff. So. Fire marshal, and I'll have to work with <laughs> 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 Any questions? Any suggestions that we can do better? Yes. Yeah. Just a comment, Robbie. Uh, thank you. Keep up the good work. You've done wonders for our community. It's something I always believe in. These venues belong in the private sector, and uh, 
private sector that gets the job done, but uh, you've just been doing great. Well, and on that note, well, thank you very much for that, but it's really not Mark or I or our family. It's the community. It's a, any sponsor you saw that we announced, it's, it's working because it's a community coming together. The community cares about Dwyer Stadium. It's all those big businesses and small businesses, you know, that help us make it possible. So they're really now you have to top the great job you did. That's always the, <laughs> that's always the top. Well, go for a championship this year. We have thirty players signed that as of today already for next season, and we have some a lot more players coming from bigger D one schools. So we're excited about that. We have great local talent too. I just want to say, uh, Bobby, you came in here a few years back and made us a lot of promises, and you've kept them, and, and, and you've done more than you promised. Um, and uh, uh, it's it's very exciting to go down to the field and, and watch a game now. It's uh, it's a whole different atmosphere that you've created, that, and that's that's your baby. I mean, you you created that. So we, uh, I I speak for myself. I speak for my constituents. I we're very grateful for what you've done. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And we get most joy about, you know, it's not about money. It's about seeing smiling faces. And that Halloween event was just incredible. But when we do Challenger Division Baseball, it, we'll let you know when that is. When that day comes, uh, I can't lie, I, I cry during it because you see those kids that just wish they could be one of the muck dogs or a baseball player. And that's, that's the neatest event that we do. So, so thank you very much. Thank you. Question. So, Rachel, you could probably answer them, I'm sure. sure. But uh, I noticed a lot of this is filled out. Is the seeker done? Correct. The seeker is always done by Doug Randall and for council's review. Okay. Um, so, it is every seeker you have seen is always done by um, our codes department and inspections department when it comes through. In this case, it is a um, environmental assessment form and the narrative. And council is basically um, appointing themselves as lead agency and considering the environmental impacts and finds that the proposed action will result in no significant adverse environmental impacts. Okay, so the, the seeker's already done and we're just voting to... Uh, I'm to just... be the lead agency. And you're not voting tonight, you're moving it forward. But yes, right. to be the lead agency and to agree with the statement that this seeker will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts or the action, and the action is the animal ordinance. Okay. And is there a public hearing to this? We already had it. We had the public hearing? Correct. On the seeker? No, we don't have a public hearing on the seeker. We have it on the local law. Right, but is there a public hearing for the seeker? No. Okay. Nope. Thank you. Yep. Okay, any other questions? Are we in agreement to move that to the next business meeting? Yes. 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 Okay. <coughs> uh, next, for the placement of city phone ring central agreement, Mr. Fix. Yes, uh, honorable council members. Um, you may or may not be aware, but the city's current phone system that is used in all the departments throughout the city is currently no longer being serviced by the provider. It hasn't been for quite some time. Prior to my arrival, a committee was put together um, with Chief Habush, um, the, at the time, <coughs> the confidential secretary to the manager, as well as two consultants um, from outside agencies to uh, look into replacing that phone system. Uh, we did somewhat of a bid system, uh, similar to an RFP, except we actually went out and found um, companies that had what we were looking for and through the process selected Ring Central to come in um, and provide us with this service. We will still get um, 
AIS, our current IT people will be involved with helping with obviously the setup of it as well as implementation as we go forward. It is a cloud-based system. It has a lot of um, unique features, some that we need, some that we don't, but the ones that we don't are part of the base package anyways. So we're going to get them things such as like there's a similar to the old AOL chat feature. They have that where <coughs> our internally we can chat with one another through the system. It all goes through the computers. We vetted it through the police department to ensure that they have everything that they need, as well as um, the fire department and our other uh, departments in the city. Any questions? I have one. It will, it will always be the same question as long as I sit on this council. Were there any local companies in the phone business that could have provided this or bid on it, and did they were they given the opportunity? Local as in the city of David? In <coughs> Genesee County area, uh, I will. Yep. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. But so back in 2019, when I was the assistant manager, there was conversations with Empire um, that those phones at the time were not this sort of package. It was where you bought the phones for a, a price, um, and then you had service packages with them. So this is a different model. Um, we looked at, and, and you can speak after I do, but we looked at other communities that had just gone through implementation, so the best um, that they could get, and having everything in the cloud we felt was the safest for our infrastructure to move forward. Um, and the phones, again, are updated and serviced on an annual basis by this provider, so we're, we're never out of a service contract like we are today. And Sean. Nope. Go ahead and jump in. It's the nail on the head. We, we looked at several vendors, uh, several different companies. Um, there wasn't a specific local company that was able to provide this type of a service that we're looking for. This uh, Ring Central is currently being used by Steuben County for their entire phone system, which is approximately 10 times larger than ours. So they've just gone through the implemental phase, and we've been on a conference call with them, and they've agreed to help us through the process if we have questions or anything like that. So. It is being used by a local municipality as well, and they give it, you know, a strong recommendation. Yeah, I have some questions. Uh, it says here that uh, you're decreasing the expense account contingency, 22290 But then it says here this contract will be for a term of 60 months at a rate of 22290 initially. So first I'll address the resolution. The... What we're doing is decreasing contingency and adding room in each department for the expense of the phones in the first year. It's a 60-month contract, is that correct, Eric? Right. Um, so I don't know where the 220 comes in. I can at least answer why the resolution is formatted like that. Next year in the budget, you will see this baked into everyone's telephone line when we walk through the budget. Right, right. but this 22290, is that just a misprint? Yeah, that's just a typo. It's 22920. 22920. Oh, I see. Reflected down below. I'm sorry. It's and the other thing, thing it says, it's, it's a it says 22, uh, okay, so let's say it's 22920 initially. Define initially. What's that mean? The, the, first, the first year of the contract is that they're giving us a discount on the implementation, which is baked into that cost. And then what's it going to be? Um, it's a six-year contract, so, or five-year contract, rather, but. I don't have that in front of me. Um. I thought it was twenty two ninety each year of the contract. No, I believe that that's the first year. I can get that information back to you. Um, it's was, not substantially more. No, in no. the in the out years. So. Yeah, it was just an initial. Um, which it should have been our first page. This is different. Is it this the sixteen the six? Credit. No, that's the cost for the services. The hundreds of phones. It's broken down itemized. Okay, Isn't can you just email it to all of council? Yeah, we'll email it before the next Thank meeting. you, because... Yeah. I understood it that the 22920 was the cost to purchase the phones and purchase the system, not the cost of running it over the next five years. Is that well, that's, that's for the first year as well as... As the purchase. Correct. And then the next four years it should go down because you don't need the purchase, right? You just need the... No, the phone is not a purchase, it's a lease. So that's a lease. For okay, it's a lease. Okay. okay. Which allows us to, if something breaks, we just get another one. We're not paying additional for it, so it keeps that service going for the 60 months. What are we purchasing then? It says 
for getting the service. The implementation is the service, so each line has a fee. So well, it says to purchase the system. What are we buying? What are we going to That's own? the phone system itself with Ring Central that they're going to implement for us. So all your voicemails, all of your, we're going to have voice, voice to email, so it can go to our emails and all that. That system itself, there's a charge for each individual phone, and then there's a lease payment for the phone itself. So if the hardware breaks down, it's replaced throughout the, the system. So instead of purchasing the phones outright and having them, and then when things go wrong, you've got to buy all new phones and pay all new fees, it's, been a, it's a lease program. So if you look at the itemized costs, the top two is for your line maintenance to maintain your line just like you would any other phone system. And then the bottom ones are for the actual individual phones, the hardware themselves. Most of the companies and corporations have these kinds of setups anyway. You're just leasing the system. And then the follow-up on what Mr. Canelli asked, where is this company out of, Ring Central? They're based out of, I say, California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're based out of California. Belmont, California. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay. Are we agreeing to move this to the next business meeting? Yes. 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 Next, deferred conversation of our annual selection. Rachel? Thank you, Council President. I'll let Don Fairbanks talk to this um, selection of deferred compensation plan. We did an RFP that is required every five years, and Don was the one who undertook all the hard work to achieve that. So I'll let you talk about um, the provider we're selecting. Yep. Um, the city <clears throat> provides a deferred compensation plan for its employees. It's basically a voluntary 457B retirement plan. They contribute themselves. There is no contribution from the city on their behalf. Um, it is um, governed by the New York State Deferred Compensation Board, which, as the city manager indicated, we have to go out to bid every five years. Our expiration is December 31st of this year, so we went out with RFPs. We had four providers that submitted and responded, and um, we we're recommending that we continue our relationship with Empower, who we're currently with. We've been them with that for several years. Um, the 457 service group is the side group that kind of services the plan, and they have serviced us, I'd say, for about 25 years. So we just would like to continue that relationship. So we recommend that we move that forward with um, selecting them as that provider. Any questions, concerns? Nope. Okay. We tend to move this uh, next business meeting. Yes. Oh, Rich? No. Okay. Okay, use of uh, reserve for ice rink children. Thank you, Council President. Um, we continually discover issues with the ice rink chiller um, at the ice rink which was built many many years ago and most recently we needed to add r22 or refrigerant <coughs> to the system in an emergency purchase so i'll let michael ficarella superintendent of water and waste explain a little bit more but we have been working with matt gray the new operator um, we were scheduled to do some renovations of locker rooms at $170,000 capital cost. We've pulled back. We're holding that those funds because we believe in the next year we need to address the whole chiller system because if we don't have ice, the locker rooms will be no good. So, Michael, if you can explain a little bit more yeah. about what's happening with the system. Yeah. Thank so you. Essentially, upon startup, they found there to be some major leaks within the system. And this refrigerant ultimately is what creates your ice. Um, upon those leaves, it drained out most of the system. So in order to get the system up and running, to keep it up and running, we had to purchase uh, 360 pounds of the refrigerant, I believe it was. And even at that, it still you know, needs, could use more. But it got us back to where we're operable at this point in time. So. It's a definite thing that we need. You know, it's not a matter of can we use it? We absolutely need it to have that ice cream cup and running. It's important we need that because there's a lot of hydrogen on the issue. Thank you. Uh, could I just ask the silly question of were the leaks fixed? 
before yes, the refrigerant? Yes. Okay, because so, I was going to say, are we going to keep adding and adding and adding? Not, oh, it's expensive. You know, at that point in time, we didn't know what leaks were present. When the system was shut down last year, we weren't aware of it, but in realistically, they're fixed for now. Correct. The system of that age is going to continue and continue and continue. That's why we're going to scale back with looking at the locker rooms. You're going to have, if anybody's ever had the privilege of going in that back mechanical room hall, I'm sure you've been back there. It's, it's not a lie to say that's a ticking time bomb back there and that's really got to be addressed in the future. But they are fixed for now. So. I just hope we'll look at the, <coughs> I was at the rink all weekend, my grandson plays hockey, the improvements there fantastic. are fantastic. Yes. Yes. Um, it's not a rink we could have been proud of a couple of years back. I mean, we traveled yeah. all the yeah. rinks and all of them are nicer than ours. I know the locker rooms are absolutely in need of repair. Um, they're super bad and I hope we're not just going to, you know, spend all the money on refrigerant and not do those locker rooms at all because we, we want to be proud of that ring because I think he's going to make it grow like they're making the muck, yeah. muck dogs grow. Sure. So and and I think in a very short amount of time you've seen a large improvement there um, since the new um, operators take it over and I think you'll continue to see that too. So now we've got a great relationship with my office, Mike's office, manager's office. We've worked with them daily. We've got a maintenance log and like it's been it's been a good relationship so far and I you know see that continuing. If you can just get the kids to air out their bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Get rid of that stench. Bob, do you have a question? I have one comment. Two years ago, I uh, went through the rink, and uh, uh, it was totally unattended. The attendant was someplace, not, not in the building. He was nowhere to be found, and uh, there was havoc being raised in the locker rooms and taking a beating. But, I'm happy to see local people now that are accountable running things. But my question is, how old are, is the chiller system? Didn't we put a date on it? When you, when you look at the records back there, you really can't pin that down. You're probably looking at least 40 years old. I'm going to say 80s. I thought it was when it was built. Right. Or have we replaced it once? 70s. 70s attached to the firehouse after the firehouse. So you're, yeah, so you're talking 50? Alicia, you know. I know you know. I, I don't. I can't say for sure, but I have had a tour back there. Uh huh. I think it's that's original. original. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The Chiller's original. Mm -hmm. So that's original. Didn't I thought a few years ago though we replaced some components or something to do with the chiller. Yeah, I know, we, I know. we did a uh, compressor replacement. Okay. But we just found out this past month that that compressor hasn't been turned back online. Yeah because they never got it actually working. Um, and we added refrigerant last year. So when Michael and Brett talk about the increased communication and relationship between ourselves and Carrier, who we have a contract with, and the rink, um, there are, we're going to keep running into these things mm -hmm. because we're gonna continue to find places that might not have been maintained to the level that they need to be for operations yes. to continue. Good but you're absolutely getting, right. Good thing we're getting a new phone system. You're going to be using it. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Any other questions? Uh, we all can send us to move this next business meeting? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Okay, next, Orochko, Prevention Maintenance Contract, Rachel. Yep. Thank you, Council President. The Water and Wastewater Department solicited bids for a five-year electrical preventative maintenance contract. And O'Connell Electric came in as the winning bid for $37,746. I'll let Michael explain exactly uh, what this contract entails and how it helps prevent electrical catastrophes in the city in the future. Yep. So an electrical technician will come in. He uses infrared equipment to look at any major electrical connections and generators, electric panels, transfer switches. And essentially they're looking for any heat source that shouldn't be there because that heat source is indicating some type of fault, some type of failure in that electrical connection. And if they do find any sort of heat source, they dig into it further and essentially just prevent any type of injury, um, you know, damage to our buildings, anything like that. And it's, like Rachel said, it's annual. This has been going on for a long time. Um, just that the five-year contract was up and we needed to rebid it. Concerns? 
The Marchiselli funding agreement, um, many of you remember Matt Worth and Ray talking about Richmond and Harvester and that 80% of our funding was going to be federal, but if they could, they were going to apply for Marchiselli funding to supplement another 15% of that contract and that work um, for this project. So just three or so weeks ago, Brett, yeah. we got the notice that we were awarded Marchiselli funding for the project. So our local share will be around five to 10% now. So we're very excited about this. And tonight you would be authorizing the agreement um, with the state of New York for the funding. And Brett, please add anything else you have. Yeah, so you're basically, the way that breaks down is you're going to get about 40, a little over $49,000 towards the design portion toward uh, Richmond and Harvester and then $260,000 towards construction. Uh, kind of the idea behind getting that money, we really never heard anything, tried to follow up with them, eventually got through to somebody and said, oh, really happy that you followed up because the person that was handling this has retired, let me check into it. Turned out you're getting you know, that amount of money. So in turn, that's gonna kind of help that project with being able to replace all our four foot sidewalks on Richmond and Harvester with ADA compliant, five foot sidewalks, ADA ramps, that's kind of the idea behind that. So unexpected funding, but additional funding nonetheless. So. Thank you. Questions, concerns? Are we all in agreement to move this to the next business meeting? Yes. yes. Next, we have purchase of a folding <coughs> machine. Rachel? Yes. Thank you, Council President. The city finance office and clerk's office utilize a folding machine for different mailers. Um, it was purchased back in 2000 and no longer works. Um, Lisa Neary and Terry Dean uh, looked into pricing with Pitney Bowes and found a, a model that they believe will work for the city. And I'll let Lisa explain the rest of it. Um, it's just a step down model from the current one that we have. Um, so the price is a little bit cheaper. I have paperwork with me right now, but um, we think it's gonna uh, work well for the city um, based on how it's being used now. And um, getting it at this point, we'll be able to, to train many other departments on how to use the machine. Um, so we're not just relying on one person to do all the folding and stuffing of envelopes. And we'd be using administrative reserves for this purchase. If it's a, if it's a step down, what do you want one that's the same as you have now? Well, we're not using it as much as we used to, Paul. Um, we now send out our water sewer bills to be um, printed and mailed by an outside contractor. Mm -hmm. So um, we're no longer printing those in-house and stuffing them. Um, pretty soon we will no longer be printing out paychecks and stuffing those. <coughs> and we are paying more vendors through um, ACH wire transfers, trans, um, transmissions. So uh, we're stuffing very fewer envelopes as we, as we move along. So there's not, not a need for a higher capacity. And um, the company that we are working with um, agree that based on our usage, the lower step down model is sufficient. Okay. Questions? Bob? What, what kind of warranty do you get on that? Um, I think it's covered for, well, we'll have to pay an annual maintenance fee, I think of $790, but they waived the first year. One year warranty, that's it? I'm sorry. There's, a, there's an annual maintenance fee that we have to pay to maintain the machine, oh, okay. but they waived the first year. So they maintain it till it breaks down yeah. completely. And then I think what happened with this one is it cost about half the amount to buy a new one that it did to maintain it this time. Good on the warranty, on the maintenance yeah. contracts, that's where. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that'll be baked into budget costs as we move forward on the operations side. Any questions? I'll leave it this one forward. We have uh, a bulletproof dust brand. She's 
I'll let you talk about yeah, the Thank you, Council President, members of Council. Each year, the Department applies for funding through the uh, Bureau of Justice Assistance Grant Program for the Patrick Lee Bulletproof Vest Partnership Award, which awards uh, funding for the purchase of half of a ballistic vest. We can't purchase the whole thing. They will only cover the cost of half of a vest. Uh, so this year, we are awarded $5,667.30 towards uh, the purchases of upcoming new purchases and replacement purchases. Our vests are uh, manufactured to last, or expected to last five years based upon wear and tear, and there's a five-year recommendation that we follow on replacing those for each officer um, as that time comes up. So we will use this funding to uh, offset the cost of new vests, which are approaching the $900 mark. Thank you. Uh, What's the life expectancy of a vest? Five years. And then what happens? And then it deteriorates to a point where the uh, ballistic rating is not um, guaranteed anymore. So you have to put that into reserves. I mean, they can still be worn, um, but again, it's, it's recommended and it's standard in the industry that they're a five-year replacement cycle. Yeah. Pretty much a no-brainer, huh? Yeah. Okay, um, any other questions? Are we on here to move that to tonight's? Yeah. Yes. yes. Special business meeting? Thank you. Let's give me a car seat grant. Uh, Rachel? Yes, thank you, Council <clears throat> President. Um, you have seen this resolution before. There was a small error in the total of the resolution on the last time you saw it and passed it. So we have fixed that error. So our accounting is correct. And we're asking that this move to tonight's special business meeting along with the bulletproof best grant. Questions? Service? Are we in agreement to move that to tonight's uh, special business meeting? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Move to adjourn. Okay, we have a motion for Mr. Bayakowski on a second. Mr. Schmidt, uh, roll call. Council member Bayakowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Bacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Okay, we're going to our special business meeting. Um, we're going to do roll call that. Yeah, okay. We're going to sign uh, agenda, agenda items on 94 2022. Mr. Bykowski. Uh, resolution 95 2022. Mr. Schmidt. Okay. Um, I guess we're going to do it. Bob, you want to take us to 94 2022, please? Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution to amend the 2022-2023 Police Department budget to reflect the receipt of a FYI 2022 Patrick Leahy Bulletproof Vest Partnership Award in the amount of $5,667.30 from the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Do I have a second? Mr. McGinnis? Questions, concerns? Roll call. Councilmember Bayakowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. <clears throat> Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Okay, 95, 2022, Ms. Schmidt. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to amend the 22-23 Fire Department budget to reflect the receipt of a car seat grant in the amount of $4,900. Thank you. Have a second. This is Briggs. Questions or concerns? Roll call, please. Council Member Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Bealey? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Certainly. Whereas Article 7, Section 105.1F of the Public Officers Law permits the legislative body of a municipality to enter into an executive session to discuss the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation, or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Batavia that upon approval of this motion, the City Council does hereby enter into executive session. Thank you. Have a second. Mr. Richmond. Roll call. 
Councilmember Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bykowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. 